Climate change is the central obsession of the environmental left today, and it's sock puppets on the left in Congress. Um, you know, Churchill wants to find a fanatic as someone who can't change their mind and won't change the subject. Well, the issue of climate change is mired in a monomania among uh, the environmental left, both as to the nature of the problem and the range of possible responses to climate change of any dimension and from whatever cause. For the climate fanatics, change is always catastrophic, always immediate, always caused by humans alone, and can only be addressed by one remedy, uh, huge and hugely expensive reductions in fossil fuel. The scientific case for catastrophic global warming, uh, global warming is starting to unravel. Uh, after two decades of steadily increasing global temperatures from the late 1970s to the late 1990s, which on the surface seem to validate uh, the basic theory of global warming, uh, well, there's been no warming for the last decade, maybe even a slight cooling, depending on how you, uh, which data set you look at. Now, this was completely unexpected and is starting to falsify the predictions of nearly every computer climate model. Uh, now, the climate campaigners are engaged in complicated contortions to explain away this inconvenient truth, but a few more years of flat or slightly declining temperatures and the entire issue might start to turn turtle on. In fact, just two weeks ago, uh, in Gallup's annual poll on environmental issues, for the first time in 30 years, a majority of Americans say that economic growth should take precedence over environmental protection by a margin of 51 to 42 percent. The previous high water mark ever for people saying the economy should take precedence over the environment was only 44 percent. Proposed in the last couple of weeks to outlaw the sales of black cars in California on the theory that black cars absorb more heat from the sun in the summer and therefore use more gasoline to run their air conditioners. In other words, we have arrived at a place in which the regulators, armed with no affirmative statute or mandate from Congress, and with a policy framework designed for a very different kind of problem, finds itself limited only by its imagination, which, as we can see, is quite expansive. This is a long and complicated story that defies simple solutions or easy remedies or the mere reversal of just a handful of Supreme Court precedents. Above all, the root of the administrative state we see galloping along at a quicker pace, even before President Obama came into office, is a set of ideas of progressive government that sees the Constitution's meaning as unfixed, to be determined by the tides of history, which somehow always seem to be running full in the direction of increasing government control over people and enterprise. At some point, we need to engage in, a serious, in, in serious thought about reforming administrative law, uh, reforming regulatory procedure with new limits on congressional delegation, uh, 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 new, uh, new rules on standing for third-party intervention, and generally about the nature and limits of government power in a globalized world of advanced technology. I'll close with this. Thank goodness we have Hillsdale College to help carry on this important work.